Well, beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And all with you. Well, here we are again in the first Sunday of Lent. And for those of you who were here this past week for our Ash Wednesday evening service, you already know that. But Ash Wednesday is the day which marks the beginning of Lent. And Lent is a time of deep repentance for the Christian. It is a time to recognize our own sinfulness, our many failures, and the many weaknesses we have. But Lent is very important for the Christian because it's a time to see our own flesh on display. It's a time to realize just how sinfully weak we really are. And friends, the more serious God's Word brings us knowledge of our sin and our need of repentance, the more glorious the message of Christ and His resurrection becomes. So don't ignore this season. Don't make the mistake thinking it's not important for your relationship to Christ. Because it is. In God's Word today, we are going to see the power of God's Word in action. And my hope is that you will see just how refreshing it is to hear the three words of absolute authority that the Savior gives to us today. Today's reading was our gospel lesson from the Gospel of St. Matthew, beginning at chapter 4, verse 1 through verse 11. I would ask if you're able to rise again out of the glorious truth of God. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. These are your holy words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in its truth. Your word is truth. Thank you. Please be seated. So were you listening intently as I read these words from Matthew's Gospel? Did you hear the three words of absolute authority? I hope so. Because these three words are the most important words for every Christian to know. What three words? Well, when Jesus was tempted three times in the wilderness, three times he replied with the three words of absolute authority. Three times he stopped the mouth of the biggest liar and enemy we have with the words, it is written. It's right here. We see God's power in action. God's word ended the discussion. Jesus used the Bible's absolute authority to defeat the devil. Friends, life is a battle between God and Satan. Now, of course, most people don't believe that. In fact, they are not going to believe much of what I say if they don't believe that statement. 
But the Bible says that life is a battle between God and the devil. And in the scripture before us today, Jesus in the wilderness met Satan face to face in that battle. A question often asked about this episode in the life of Christ is why Jesus went into the wilderness and why was he tempted if he himself is without sin? Well, those are good questions that I trust, hope, most of you know the answer to because it's not like you haven't heard these things before, right? But why do I need to hear the gospel every day? Yes, because every day I forget the gospel. So as a refresher, the first thing to know is that before Christ began his public ministry, the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus had just received at his baptism, immediately right after his baptism, led Christ out into the wilderness where he would face the devil's temptations and be tested. But these temptations were not willed by the devil. They were willed by God the Father, whose salvation plan called for Jesus to be tempted and to triumph over that temptation. More on that in a bit. But our text tells us that Christ was in the wilderness after he had been without food, fasting for 40 days. Now the number 40 holds special significance in the Bible. And while there are many examples, here are a few important ones. God destroyed the sinful earth with 40 days and 40 nights of rain during the flood. That has special significance in our baptism. Specific to today's lesson, the Israelites themselves wandered 40 years in the wilderness after they were disobedient to God. And Jesus... He appeared for 40 days to minister to his chosen apostles after his resurrection. The season of Lent, which we celebrate in the Lutheran Church, is 40 days minus Sundays, because every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection, which is why Christians should be in church every Sunday, but that's a lesson for another sermon. <laughs> but during these 40 days of Lent, we remember the fast and the testing of our Lord in the desert. So every time we have a 40-something, whether days, months, or years in the Bible, it always deals with a period of testing or trial, restoration, or renewal. So Jesus, he's out in the wilderness fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And 40 days, by the way, is just about as long as a person can survive without food. So Jesus, in his humanity, would have been weak, hungry, and very vulnerable. It is at this exact time that he suddenly has a visitor. A sneaky, sly, conniving, deceiving visitor. Satan himself who came to tempt Jesus and try to get him to fail before his ministry even began. But why did Christ go out into the wilderness in the first place? Well, he went there especially for the people of Israel and for us in our stead. For the people of Israel, Christ would succeed in the wilderness where they failed. Remember, after they were captive in Egypt, they were forced to wander in the wilderness. This wandering was a test for them to see whether or not they would keep God's word and do his will. Of course, they failed at nearly every turn as they committed adultery, surrendered to idolatry, and complained and protested about nearly every single thing God and his grace was providing for them. So they failed miserably as they were tempted in their wandering in the wilderness. But the same is true with us. We complain and protest before God as we commit adultery, as we surrender to idolatry, as we fail miserably in living God-pleasing lives and doing His will. 
So Jesus, as Israel's son, does what Israel could never do. Be perfectly obedient to God. And Christ does what we can never do. Be perfectly obedient to God. So the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness for Satan to tempt him. And this was done in order that Christ might show himself as the perfect and perfectly obedient Son of God on behalf of Israel as well as on behalf of the entire world including, of course, you and me. You see, loved ones, since we continually and repeatedly fail when we are tested, Jesus was subjected to the devil's temptation in our place. Because as true man, Jesus experienced genuine temptation. But as true God, he alone could overcome all the sinful temptations of the flesh. Now there's another thing I want to mention here that is directly related to Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. And that is his baptism. Now I'm not going to go into full depth here because we study the baptism of Jesus during the epiphany season. But in that study we learned that in the same manner that Christ in the wilderness was tempted for us, Jesus was baptized for us. We learn that Jesus puts himself into the water so that when we go out into the water, we come out with him. I, I think that's a Luther quote, actually. But we learned that at his baptism, John the baptizer, recognizing who Jesus was, refused to baptize him until Christ told him it was necessary for him to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness, fulfill God's plan. But immediately after Jesus was baptized, remember what happened? God the Father spoke in an audible voice from heaven, and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. Both of these confirmed that Jesus was who he said he was, and that he was now ready to begin his ministry on earth. It's right after this event that our text today takes place. More specifically, Jesus went out into the wilderness immediately after he heard the authoritative words of his father, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Now the point I'm making here is that these words of God the father no doubt gave Jesus the strength and the nourishment he needed to stand up to the devil's temptations during his time of extreme testing. In other words, Jesus trusted in the absolute authority of the word. The words, it is written, surely sustained and comforted him when he needed it most. Loved ones, the same is true for us. God's word will sustain and comfort you during your times of trial and testing. And while scripture won't magically fix all of your troubles and make them all go away, <laughs> we should certainly look at God's word to understand his plan for us in Christ, which gives to us tremendous comfort, peace, and assurance. That assurance begins by rightly understanding the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. The book of Hebrews says, in Hebrews 2.18, which reads, For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. And Hebrews 4.15 reads, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. 
loved ones, Jesus was and is a real human who has shared in every aspect of human life, including the temptation to sin. And Jesus, as our substitute, our mediator, was tested in every way that we ourselves are tested. But because Jesus is the sinless Christ and knows the reality of human weakness, he is able to bring our needs to God the Father and plead our case before him. And because Jesus is a real human, he knows the desires, the lusts, the cravings we have. He knows all the temptations that you and I face every single day that lead us into sin. But because he is the perfect sinless Savior, because he is the one who was tempted and tested as we are, when we put our trust in him and the absolute authority of God's word, we are given strength to help us to overcome many of the temptations that we face in this life. Let's walk through today's gospel and look at the details of Jesus' temptation and how his testing and triumph over it helps us. The text says in Matthew 4 verses 1 through 3 which reads, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Now as we've already learned, the man Jesus was certainly hungry when Satan came for his tempting visit. But listen again how Jesus responded to Satan. He responds with the three words of absolute authority. Matthew 4.4 4 reads, Jesus answered Satan, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now Jesus here was quoting from Moses when he spoke to the Israelites about why God had let them be hungry in the wilderness. But notice that Jesus doesn't let Satan have any leeway whatsoever. When Christ said to the devil, it is written, Satan was stopped in his tracks. So Jesus doesn't even listen to Satan. He doesn't take the bait. He simply uses the only weapon that works against the tempter, the great deceiver, the father of all liars. Jesus used the absolute authority of the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Friends, it's right here. <laughs> That's one of the most important things that you as a Christian need to appreciate. Because this is one of the most significant verses found in the entire Bible. Jesus here is telling us that the Bible is the Word of God and that it is absolutely authoritative. Meaning it is powerful, it is living and it is active. And it should be aggressively used in your life and mine. But I also want you to see something else that is vital in your walk through life as a Christian. See if you can figure it out as I read through these next two verses. Matthew 4 verse 5 and 6 reads, Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Did you catch that? Who is now quoting scripture? Satan. And this is a great warning for us all. Because the devil knows the Bible. And he will tempt you in all different ways. 
he will tempt you to disregard it. And he'll be really sneaky with how it's quoted and used by many false teachers. Did God really say? But again, listen to how Jesus responds to Satan's lies. Matthew 4 verse 7 reads, Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Here again, we see that Jesus knows exactly who he is. And he will not allow the devil to deceive him or tempt him in any way. But just like with us, Satan doesn't give up. He keeps coming with his temptations to try to get his way. So he came after Jesus to tempt him a third and final time. Matthew 4 verses 8 and 10 reads, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. You see, Satan comes along and says, You know, you got to work on Sunday because you're going to get a lot of money. You know, you don't have time to do those services in the midweek. You got a family to be with. Y you know, you don't want to do these things because you're going to miss out. All these I will give to you. All this fun, all this family, all this wealth. If you just fall down and worship me. But what did Jesus do? Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus, as the Holy Son of God, was not tempted by Satan. And Christ refused to be manipulated in any way by the devil's lies. And what we see right here is that Jesus used the weapon of God's word to thwart the deceptions of the devil. When Jesus said these three words of absolute authority, it is written, Satan was stopped dead in his tracks. And loved ones, when I let God's word speak to me, and let the Bible say what it really says. What a difference it can make in my life as I learn more about this wonderful Savior who loves me so. The Bible goes on to tell us that after Christ completely refused the plotting, the scheming, the lies and deceits of the devil, Satan was forced to depart. And God sent angels to Jesus to comfort and minister to him. This should be very comforting to you and to me and to every person who follows the Lord Jesus. You see, loved ones, as we ourselves battle the devil with his lies and his temptations, we can know that using the weapon of Christ's own choosing, the Word of God, we can obtain the strength and our armor needed in our fight against the evil one. Luther had a wonderful quote which reads in part, the devil can rattle your bed, but he can't get inside of you because you are a baptized forgiven child of God. So escape from the devil and his wily ways with the word of God, which is your rock and your foundation. This is so true, isn't it? The devil really has no control over us. It's only when we relinquish that control to him. But you have the power to fight him. It's found in the word of God. You have the power to fight him because you are a baptized, forgiven child of God. 
So when you think about how miserably you oftentimes fail in your Christian life with your temptations, when the evil thoughts that seem to never end keep popping up in your mind, when you find yourself exploding in anger or jealousy, when you feel sorry for yourself because you are not recognized the way you think you should be recognized, when you have resentment or envy of others, or when I simply can't understand that I'm not the man that God wants me to be. Don't go into despair. Just know that Christ not only fulfills these things for you, but he also sets the devil at flight. And he does it using the word of God. The same powerful, living, and active word of God that you also have. So when these things, loved ones, seem to overpower you, remember these wonderful words of Scripture. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Loved ones, Jesus took the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He did this for our sake, because we can't do it on our own. Jesus is our substitute who defeated Satan for us. And in the process, he has set us free from sin, death, and the devil's power. Loved ones, it is God's holy word and blessed sacrament that gives you the strength needed to walk through this world of sin. Christ encountered the devil face to face with nothing but the word of God. And that's how we, too, are to face Satan with his temptations, deceptions, and lies. With the three words of absolute authority. It is written. As we enter into this holy season of Lent, and we focus on our own individual sinfulness and our failures and our weaknesses before God. Remember, you have a mediator between you and God because of your sinfulness. Our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. As you leave this church today, I want you to remember always that you are a baptized, redeemed child of God. You bear Christ's name and victory upon your head and your heart. And friends, nothing or no one can ever snatch that away. Glorious Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to this earth to live the sinless life that I cannot live, to be tempted with sin and triumph over that sin, the same sin that I commit every day. Thank you for teaching us that when I trust in the Lord and what he does for me, I'm saved. And I'm saved because I am a baptized, forgiven child of God. Thank you for giving me that title. Let me always remember that title, Father. And thank you for Jesus, who loves us so. In his name we pray. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.